All right, guys and gals, Crypto Kurt here with another crypto video, and today I'm going to be having uh, doing a quick review of the Quark Chain ICO. Before we get started, let me just remind you that this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor, and this video should be construed and used for education, research, and entertainment purposes only. Okay, so just to get started here, we're looking at the ICODrop.com. It's just a quick overview of ICOs. Uh, you can see the token sale starts, runs May to June. They're trying to get, they've got a goal of uh, $20 million they're trying to achieve. Uh, according to the ICO drop rating, the hype rate is very high, uh, the risk rate is very low, and the return on investment rate is very high. Ticker symbol is going to be QKC. It is an ERC-20 token. You can see that one QKC equals 0 0.0255 US cents. Uh, fundraising goal again is 20 million USD, and total tokens available are going to be 10 billion. Uh, they're only releasing 20% for the token sale. They're definitely getting hyped. If you come over here to Twitter, it's 11,000.2 uh, followers or 11.2 thousand followers. On Telegram, they currently have 69,388. I actually joined the Telegram last night, and there was more people joining, doing the pop-up joining than uh, than anybody making comments. It was just it seems to be a mad rush into this thing. I know that uh, both Superman and, and uh, Crypto Crow have been talking about this particular ICO, so that's obviously driving a lot of attention to them. So again, I thought I'd have a quick look. So I'll just go through the website real quick. Uh, Quarkchain is a high-capacity peer-to-peer transactional system. They are pointing out, be careful about the scam. There is no pre-sale, and there seems to be some pre-sale uh, URL that, that some scammers have put up, and they're trying to get people to give them Ethereum to get your to steal your Ethereum, basically. So don't fall for that. Only go through the uh, Quarkchain Telegram, I think, is going to be the only way you're actually going to get access to the KYC. And we'll have a look at some of the features of this product. And the biggest thing that they're really trying to do is um, scalability. So they're trying to solve the scalability problem before they even launch the platform. Whereas you guys are probably familiar with, you know, the clogs in Ethereum and Bitcoin when the platforms get um, overloaded, uh, things get expensive and things get really slow. And again, so these guys are starting out with a protocol. So this is going to be a baseline protocol, which dApps will be built on top of. But they're starting with a supposedly super fast system. And if we run a comparison, you're looking at four transactions per second on Bitcoin, 10, tra 10 transactions per second with Ethereum, 99,990 plus transactions per second with Quark Chain. And then to compare that to Visa, this was as of uh, August 2016. Visa is currently managing 44,996 transactions per second. So Quark Chain basically is going to double uh, the transactions per second that Visa is currently handling. We come down here to the technology explanation section. You can see Quark Chain consists of two layers of blockchains. We apply elastic sharding blockchains called shards as the first layer and a root blockchain that confirms the blocks from the shards as the second layer. They're designed, we've designed a game theoretic framework for incentives where hash powers are incentivized to distribute evenly among shards. There are at least 50% of overall hash power allocated to the root chain to prevent double spending attacks. Horizontal scalability, because super full node can be extremely expensive when transactions per second goes high, we allow multiple honest nodes forming a cluster running as a super full node. The cross shard uh, transactions can be issued at any time and confirmed in minutes. The, uh, then throughout the, the, through, the throughput of cross shard transactions increase lin linearly as the number of shards increase. And then simple account management. There's only one account needed for all shards. All cryptocurrencies from different shards are stored in one smart wallet. They are inviting people to uh, come in and, and test the test net. They're looking for 100 volunteers. Uh, the test net's going to be available this month in 2018. We welcome all candidates with strong technical background and programming experience in blockchain. If you're interested, please submit your resume here. So if you guys are super geeks and you want to get involved, uh, jump in there and do some testing with the guys. We have a quick look at the team. Just mouse over here. So the founder, Key Zhu, a software engineer and expert in high-performance systems, former Googler and 15-plus years of development experience, PhD from Georgia Institute of Technology. He currently lives in San Diego. Uh, <clears throat> I just got that off his LinkedIn profile. Uh, the software engineer behind this export and large scale dis expert in large scale distributed systems with six years work experience at Facebook and Google, master in computer science from University of Michigan. 
They've got a couple of research uh, scientists here, full professor at Georgia Tech, um, another research scientist, professor at um, Zhen Zhao University, partner of, of uh, Demo++, PhD from Virginia Tech, dedicated on blockchain uh, development and research, and another research uh, person who has also got a PhD from the Georgia Institute of Technology. So it seems like a lot of smart people are behind this pro project. And then we have some advisors here. I don't know what the Franklin Medal is, but this guy is a distinguished professor from Virginia Tech. This guy's hilarious. For those of you who are in Australia, you got to laugh. Does this not look like Hamish in about 40, 30 years? I mean, seriously, that is such a shoe in guys. It's so, so hilarious. Um, distinguished engineer at Sun Microsystems, co-led the ZFS team and served as chief, uh, chief engineer for storage at Sun Microsystems, former president of DSSD. And then we have Mike Miller, who's the founder of uh, Cloud, Cloudant, PhD physicist with 100 plus publications under his belt. So again, a lot of smart people behind this, this program. <clears throat> if we look at their roadmap or their timeline, this is right where we are, right in the middle. So they've had this progress happening here. Um, they're doing the testnet and the wallet uh, dot point, point zero point one. It's going to come out this month. Uh, sorry, March, supposedly March. Um, Q2 2018, Testnet 1.0 smart contract, and then Q4 2018 will be the mainnet and the smart wallet, and then Q2 2019, they're going to go live with the core chain core and smart wallet. Now, uh, again, it, the paper doesn't, uh, doesn't announce that, and I'm going off on a tangent here, but I'm thinking at some point they may switch the tokens from ERC-20s onto their platform. I don't think this is going to be a native um, uh, Ethereum platform. I may be wrong. Let's just have a quick look at their token sale terms and conditions. So this is the kind of their token paper. Um, thank you for your interests. They're going to ensure a, a smooth and fair ICO process throughout the coming weeks. Uh, they'll be actively updating our announcements and future details. Uh, currently, I think most of their commentary is happening on their Telegram or their Steemit pages. This is one of their announcements that came out on Steemit which is basically just talking about the early adopter. You could, if you signed up before 5.5, you got, you, you're, you become somebody special, somebody important or whatever. Um, and it talks a little bit about the KYC, which is gonna kick off on the 7th of the 5th. Come back here to the token paper. Uh, there is and will be no pre-sale. So all mentionings of pre-sale are likely a misuse of private sale. Beware of scammers. We will not cancel the public sale. We will not run a Dutch auction. We will not promote unnecessary social media proof of care competition. And we will not encourage a gas war situation. So this is the sale, basically the private sale, which has already happened, I believe. Um, again, you can, well, it doesn't matter because we're not involved with that. Here's the public, uh, public sale. So one Ethereum is going to get you 31,533 tokens. No lockup, so you'll get the tokens immediately. And they got a hard cap of $4 million. Again, total supply of $10 billion, but they're only releasing 10, uh, $2 billion in the public and private sale. This is a breakdown of the distribution. So the 20% to the token sale, 15% to the team. 15% to the foundation, which is locked up for two years. Um, all of these are locked up for two years, which is great. 5% uh, to the advisors locked up for two years. And 45% is going to go to, uh, going to be available for the mining community and marketing. So I just say this is not probably a get rich quick ICO. This is going to be one of those things that's going to be a slow burn, but that's okay. If you're in it for the long term, this could be definitely a way to, uh, to get yourself a foundation of a new protocol, which could actually become one of the, one of the leaders in the marketplace. This is talk about the whitelisting in the KYC timeline. So again, the whitelisting starts at uh, basically a zero, one minute AM PST time. Uh, it lasts for two weeks. It's interesting though, because um, due to the growing interest in our project and limited token supply during the public sale, we'll be using a probabilist, probabilistic approach to be as fair as mathematically possible. There are three main aspects we will take into consideration. In particular, detailed of calculation and method will be shared later. First is the timestamp of joining Telegram. So if I were you and you were interested in this, I'd go join Telegram now because when you join, it's going to have an impact on whether you get the um, get into the whitelist or not. Here you see the earlier you join, the higher score you will get for this section. Anytime after, well, it's too late now. So sorry, guys, it's too late to uh, try to get in on that one. Uh, your understanding of the project and your contribution to the project. Although we appreciate our community uh, following us on Medium, Twitter, Reddit, and others, we do not promote unnecessary social media proof of care competition. And then they're running a cap here. So we'll be using a bottom-up tier style to be as fair as possible and ensure everyone who got whitelisted is able to contribute. Depending on your whitelist KYC speed, we will peg ETH price on a certain date. That will give us a rough number of ETH to be, uh, to be collected. 
and then they will go as follows. So you'll see the first 12 hours max contribution is uh, no limit. Next eight hours, two, two by ETH max, four by, uh, eight by, 16 by. Again, here is uh, blah, blah, blah. This ensures our public sale will last at least 24 hours. So they're trying to spread it out to make sure the people around the world, so to accommodate investors from all time zones. Okay, I'm going to point out a couple things in the white paper, but it is fairly technical, and this is a baseline protocol. And the white paper spends a lot of time speaking as if they were writing this paper for miners. So they put a lot of effort in the white paper into describing why and how you would want to get involved with mining this particular protocol or this particular coin. And they also go spend quite a bit of time um, articulating the, the various aspects of the node, the super node, the clusters, and also the uh, the shard. So we're going to have a look at that. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the very last page or the very end of the white paper first, and I'm going to read through a, a case study that they're giving as an example of how this solution could work. Okay, so this is all the way down on page 28 of 33 pages. So Chihuho is a content-based social media that publishes reviews of Chinese food and restaurants in the U.S. and has over half a million subscribers in WeChat and 400,000 followers in its Facebook and Weibo page. The company makes revenues by selling vendors product on its e-commerce website and by collecting advertising fees and consulting fees from restaurants and packaging food companies. To further penetrate the market share, Chihuho is looking for a solution to increase user acquisition and retention. What we offer to Chihuho, or Chihuho is to run a dApp on a cork chain and supply its own token. By doing so, Chihuho will create an economic cycle shown below. Okay, so you can see the image showing the user, the Chihuho, and then the restaurants and the retailers. And if we read through this, the, users, uh, the user receives tokens from Chihuho as registration, loyalty, referral, awards. Okay? The token can be spent by users as voucher for local uh, restaurants, retailers, e-commerce platform. The restaurants and the food vendors return the token to Huho as an, in, as an exchange of discounted advertising consulting fees. This economic loop has three benefits. First, Chihuho builds a sustainable user growth model. The model covers up user acquisition, retention, and referral. This allows Chihuho to penetrate and retain its market, market fast and sturdy. Uh, user benefits from this model by paying less money on food and restaurants, retailers, and food manufacturers. In addition to have discounted price for marketing fee, Chihuho can quantitatively measure Chihuho's advertisement performance by analyzing token recycle. This transparency also allows Chihuho and themselves to better strategize marketing campaigns. So the thing here that they don't, what they don't talk about here is, could you imagine if they had, you know, half a million subscribers on WeChat, 400,000 followers on its Facebook and Weibo page. So there's, there's basically a million people that would potentially be using this platform doing multiple hundreds of thousands of transactions any given day, right? So that's the, that's the scenario. What we're talking about here is having a protocol that can support and service a vendor or a solution that is going to potentially have hundreds of thousands of transactions per second or per minute. So again, this is this is the scenario. This is this is the problem that this uh, this token is is fixing. I'm not going to go through the whole white paper. It actually is quite well, not super technical, but it certainly gets into the nitty gritty of blockchains. And it was I learned quite a bit about um, you know blockchains and some of the issues with with current blockchains and what these guys are you know how these guys are going to solve this problem. So if you are um, either potentially interested in in mining or if you're interested in learning a bit more about blockchains, how they work, and how this is going to be solved by this particular token, I highly suggest you do come in and read uh, the white paper. It's not it's not so technical you can't understand it, but it's certainly is um, a great explanation of the problems that are faced currently by decentralization issues, scalability issues, and then how multiple blockchains can be brought into the solution. It talks a little bit about the Lightning Network, and I think ultimately that's what their shards are kind of doing. They're kind of like off-chain uh, off-chain transactions, which are then updated onto the main chain. And again, that's part of the pool as well. We'll go through the sharding bit here. So re sharding refers to horizontal partition of data to break a database into smaller parts. is one of the most common ways in centralized systems to address the scalability problem. 
for instance, Bigtable and Cassandra, two examples in the non-blockchain world to be born to solve large throughput issues. Notably, Ethereum has adopted sharding technology to scale up, and its phase one development is near completion. However, to adopt sharding on an existing blockchain is complicated, and it is estimated to have three to five more years to go before Ethereum can fully support other fundamental sharding issues such as cross-shard transactions. Talks a little bit about the trade-offs between security, decentralization, and scalability, and all of those have a trade-off. And I think, again, for those of you who are keen on this stuff, you've probably seen some of these issues with regards to you know the block size in, um, in and SegWit and all the things that that Bitcoin has been trying to do. But they're trying to become um, they don't want to uh, reduce the security, but they don't want to raise but they do want to raise the scalability. And again, all these issues have trade-offs that you have to deal with. Okay, so quickly, how is QuarkChain going to fix this? So QuarkChain contains an elastic sharding blockchain layer, which contains a list of minor blockchains called shards. Each shard processes a subset of all transactions independently. Therefore, as the number of shards increase, shards can process more transactions concurrently. As a result, the system capacity increases as the number of shard increases. QuarkChain has a root blockchain that confirms all blocks from sharded blockchains. The root blockchain does not process any transactions since it is not economically efficient, but its block has sufficiently strong difficulty so that reverting any transaction, i.e. the transactions in root blockchain, is not economically efficient. And a, the QuarkChain network is designed to support additional shards in an active network. Adding more shards is easy and fast, while users barely sense this. The users may feel faster uh, processing of transactions if the network is congested before adding shards. Now, they talk about this collaborative mining thing. Um, so the hash powers are incentivized to distribute evenly among shards. This ensures that all shards are mined evenly, and thus uh, the system throughput increases as the number of shards increase. And it goes on to basically try to explain why you can get involved with this platform as a miner and you don't have to join a mining pool. The, the platform itself is going to, to build these um, sub versions or, or sub nodes, which eventually will all come together to create a super node. And I'll just finish up by looking at the token economics of the ecosystem. So as discussed above, the main goal of Quarkchain is to solve scalability uh, problem of the current blockchain-based systems. The key application scenarios of Quarkchain will focus on financial tech areas and game industries. Uh, token of Quarkchain QKC will play very important roles which carry the value of Quarkchain. There are several detailed application fields of QKC. One, as a value carrier. So basically, the, you know, the core value of the token itself, just like Ethereum has core value. The essence of the encrypted currency is the value carrier, which is the most important attribute of QKC. Transaction currency. So similar to Ethereum, each transaction on QuarkChain needs to pay transaction fees. Since QuarkChain has powerful transaction processing capability, transaction fee will be very low. Transaction fees can only be paid by QKC, and QuarkChain supports smart contracts, interacts with contracts on QuarkChain, will pass through transactions. And contribution rewards, so as a peer-to-peer -peer system, using economics means to produce positive feedback can promote the continuous development of the system. QKC will be the reward to motivate the community to make continuous contributions to the system. So that's it, guys. Again, what you need to do is come on in and have a look at the white paper yourself. Have a look at what they're trying to do, what they're trying to achieve. Maybe watch this quick little video here. But again, ultimately, the big news is... They're calling themselves, you know, the the um, blockchain 3.0. So again, they're going to achieve double the transactions per second that's currently being transacted by Visa. And they're going to obviously leave Ethereum and Bitcoin in the dust. So we shall see, guys. But again, take your time, do your own homework, and give me a thumbs up and a like. Give me a subscription if you like this. Spread the word. And this is Crypto Kurt out.